Hey, how's it going? So we're going to have a little bit of a all over the place video just content wise, but um, tie it all together. Uh, so we're really trying to connect to different intervals and, you know, add the next batch of common things that happen on guitar in singer-songwriter contexts with a ear towards the cranberries as the melodic um, indie situation. So, um, so for starters, seventh chords, you know, um, you know the movable seventh chord and minor seventh, uh, and on the, you know, on the, you probably know this and this, so those are regular seventh chords. Uh, E7 back here, you know, is adding a D to an E chord, so that can be this, or this, or a good one is full E chord with that in there. Um, and there we have for the first time the theme of putting the note in up high in the chord versus putting it in, in the bass, or in the same octave rather, how distinctly different they sound. The same octave, crunchy, and say, uh, the octave instead of seventh, thinner. Um, we want both depending on what's up. Um, so okay, uh, so seventh chords. We got this A major 7, like that, which is, and you already know that from certain contexts. So major 7 is its own tonality. It's this, and that's got our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, regular 7th, as opposed to 7th chords, which one fret back have a flat 7th in them. So there it is, stuff you already knew. Well, let's go alphabetical. Um, things we're going to be looking for are unique opportunities for each one of these chords, which ones move around, uh, first position specific stuff, and uh, you know, connecting with intervals. Um, so hey, A, A7, you add a G. This one's good. You can put it in up on the first string, and you can just play a full on A chord like that. And if you use your strong two fingers, that becomes a movable chord with a pinky available. But either way, there's a good A7. Um, a sus2 is going to be adding a, a, de a deuce, so a B. So that's like the E minor shape on the wrong strings, that sound. So there's that. And it works in any number of major E. Or minory contexts. A sus4 is adding D, so that's this D in there. Like, uh, I was just playing D, then I went to A sus4. Whether or not I resolved it. Um, so there's another good one for the A camp. Um, and that's pretty much what we're looking to add. Uh, so yeah, sit around and play with A a little bit. Um, and then you've got your radio headed assignment of back working, figuring out what the chords were from certain songs. Uh, so B is, you know, there's B7, like the Beatles chord, and everything else is a bar chord. So it's going to be the sometimes Y of these shapes we're going to be using very often uh, for keys that are natural slants and things. Um, so C, here's C, C major 7. There's no good way to play C minor in first position, it's just a bar chord. Um, C sus2 is adding the D there, which is often done with this shape, like the hippie G. And we talked about how that's like a whole type of song, the, these two fingers. So there that came up for the first time, just going uh, C at nine, and they mean one, two, three, four, four, five, six, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's an add nine chord. And you could also say C plus two or C sus two for that. You'd technically be given the right answer. And C7 is a movable chord. 
let's have a quick tangent where we talk about the ninth chord shape, which instead of for D, for instance, instead of five, four, five, three, it's a regular seventh chord, five, four, five, 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 the funk chord. And that's got just like M. So there's a ninth chord, and there's a lot of cool ways to use that, and your root note's just the one you've got your middle finger on. Not a great way to do that off the sixth string. So there there's that shit. Back to the alphabet, we were just talking about C chords, um, and then, uh, you know, um, C sus4 would be adding F, that's like our or stuff, so a sus4 chord. Um, D. D7. D major 7 bunch of twos straight across D sus 2 the first string open D sus 4 pinky or this one or both adding a, a G to it so this whole and, you know. so yeah D stuff um a good uh, sixth chord to play is uh, D6 like this, like it's the same as if you add the, the open second string, but like, so there's a good sixth opportunity that's D specific, um, and that's how a sixth sounds. Um, cool. So there's some D stuff. E stuff. Um, we've got the E minor 7 with that in there. Uh, we've got um, an E sus 2 is the adding an A. Uh, I'm sorry, that's sus 4. Sus 2 would be an F sharp. So that's like this. Anytime we get all Metallica and add that F sharp right there, that's what you get. Or putting it in on the first string. Listen to how different those sound from each other. Um, anyway, there is that. For an email. Okay. Um, so. We are talking about E chords. There's not really a good major seven that works, but it's not really it's too crunchy. Um, you know, and, and as we move forward here, we've got like, you know, minor seven, the way we actually play it is putting the, you know, like this or this or, you know, uh, some of the chord shapes we already talked about because they are this bar chord, um, are E chords. But yes, yeah, so, so it's four. Like that. And then there are some good sixes. Let's do the same thing on the second string. And then first string is the uh, the shape we were just talking about. Cool. F. F sus2 means we're going to be adding a G to it. You've probably done plenty of that. This G up there. And or the open third string in an F chord. Sus4 is we're gonna. That was hot. Anyway, is gonna be putting in a B flat to an F chord, um, and that's like uh, on the third string. So we already know that. And then major seven for F is adding that open high E string that we've probably done by accident a million times. So yeah, the. There's that major seven sound again. Um, and then, of course, all the standard E shape chords work for F. Um, so, yeah, moving forward, we get to uh, G. Tons of stuff in G. You know, G7. There's this G. We talked about flopping down your middle finger and fretting about here, so your index finger's free to do stuff, and that your fifth string can just be nothing doing, you know, like that. So, cool. 
so G plus 2 is going to be what I just did, actually, adding um, an A to a G. Like, I just put in A on the uh, third string. Like that. Um, and uh, G major 7 is just backing up the high note one fret. Like that. Pause the video and take this phone call now, but we have that technology. Okay, continuing with stuff we were talking about, which was F stuff and then G stuff, and we just got into major seven right there. And you know, mess around with finding these notes in other places um, with both of those uh, G grips and seeing what you can figure out. Um, which brings us to H, just messing with you. We're back to A, where we started. And that's a whole bunch of stuff. So, you know, uh, cross-reference cross that with how you might be able to use them as movable chords, like we discussed, um, and try to see how it all fits into a larger structure to, uh, you know, this, this chord is this. So you know, this four or seven. You know, all this stuff. But either way, those are good things for you to add. And then at the end, we talked about thumb over top, just trying to do some, you know, where you bend with the force of these two fingers, keep your arm and elbow relaxed um, all up here and shit. Um, so let me know if you want anything other than that. I think that's enough to get your wheels turning. And if I missed an entire letter, I'm the worst. But I don't really think I did. I think we did it all. Um, and I will see you in a couple weeks. Just rip it uh, with the singing. You never, I mean, whatever, what's the worst that's going to happen? Just